The International Accounting Standards Board, YASB, and the Financial Accounting Standards Board, FASB, have issued two new standards requiring lessees of property and non-property assets to account for these leased assets and the liability associated with them on their balance sheet. If you're watching this video, chances are you have identified your organization as a lessee of assets and you need to know what steps to take to ensure that your financial statements are compliant. Before continuing with this video, we recommend that you watch the other videos related to balance sheet lessee accounting processes to familiarize yourself with the lease management features. Videos are available that provide an overview of the solution and that discuss the steps that you need to take in the balance sheet lessee accounting process to get to this point. All of these videos, along with additional resources, are available on the Lease Management Solution page on LearnJDE.com. As mentioned, the previous videos discuss the balance sheet lessee accounting process up through lease commencement, which includes the creation of initial lease liability and ROU asset journal entries. In this video, we will discuss how your ongoing lease payments impact your leased assets and how to run monthly processes to create lease liability and ROU asset journal entries, ensuring that your financial statements are up to date for your leased assets. As we saw in the previous video, we successfully created amortization schedules for our leased assets and ran the lease commencement process. Our lease has been updated with a lease liability status of 40, commencement complete. We are now ready to process monthly journal entry information for the lease. To create monthly balance sheet lessee accounting journal entries, you run the Balance Sheet Lessee Accounting Journals program, the R15180. This program is accessible from batch versions or from the Balance Sheet Lessee Accounting menu, G15201. When you run the R15180, you can specify the through month and the year in the processing options. If you do not specify a through month and year, the system date is used. The system processes all months for the selected assets that have not already been processed up through the through month and year. This enables you to process multiple months at once, ensuring that journal entries for months that were already processed are not created again. You use the options on the Batch tab and the Versions tab to specify the version of the Journal Entry Master Business function to use when creating the journals and you specify general ledger information for the journal entries. The R15180 uses the information on the amortization schedules, the processing options, and the balance sheet lessee accounting AAIs to create journal entries that adjust your lease liability and ROU asset balances each month. This table shows the typical entries that are created for an operating lease. You can see where the values are retrieved from the amortization schedules, which AAI is used to create the journal entry, and whether the entry is a debit or a credit. This table shows the typical entries that are created for a finance lease. Again, we can see where the values are retrieved from, the AAI used to generate the journal entry, and whether the entry is a debit or a credit. Each month, as you process the R15-180, the system updates the amortization schedules with a green circle to indicate that journal entries for that period have been created. Additionally, the system updates the batch number, document number, and GL date fields with the information associated with the batch of journal entries. As with your commencement journals, you use the Balance Sheet Lessee Accounting Batch Review Program, the P15-0911, to review and post your monthly journal entries. Monthly balance sheet accounting journal entries are created with a batch type of LA and the explanation remark field is populated with balance sheet lessee journals to identify them. You can review and post the journal entries from here. Typically, you run balance sheet lessee accounting journal entries once a month. If you go for more than a month without running your journal entries, the amortization schedule is updated with a red indicator showing that your journal entries are past due. Additionally, the Asset Balances Require Update Watchlist alert is available on the Lessee Accounting Manager UX1 page to notify users when monthly journal entries are overdue. You continue processing your monthly journal entries until your lease is complete. Be aware that in some cases the Right of Use Asset Amortization Schedule will have more periods than the Lease Liability Schedule. 
This occurs when you have the right to continue using an asset after you have finished paying for it. In this example, we see that the lease ends on December 31st, 2020. However, the ROUA end date for Unit 4500 is March 31st, 2021, three months later than the lease ending date. In this example, we see that the lease liability schedule contains 36 periods and is calculated up through the lease ending date of December 2020. Here, we see that the right of use asset schedule for the same asset contains three additional periods and extends through the right of use asset end date. You want to continue processing your monthly journal entries until all lines on both schedules have been processed. When you process monthly journal entries for the last line of an asset's amortization schedules, the system updates the lease liability status on the lease master to 50, schedules complete. And there you have it. You did it. You've successfully completed the balance sheet lessee accounting process. For additional information, visit the Lease Management Solution page on www.learnjde.com. Thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.